Hello everyone, and welcome back to Book Club Preview. I'm Michael, and today we're looking at The Maze Runner, Chapter 2. And oh man, does this book just get into it. So, <laughs> the first part is Thomas gets out of the elevator, and everyone's just grabbing onto him, helping him get out to stand up, brushing him off, and, and just helping him stand up straight. As he's looking around, he's just, Thomas is trying to understand what is going on. Um, all these like young boys are around him, uh, like middle school to high school age, maybe, maybe 14 to 18. Um, you know, just looking around, just trying to see everyone, trying to understand. Um, he finally asks, um, where am I? And then he starts to get all sorts of conversation people snickering people laughing um one boy in particular um really strong buff um asian guy who looks about 17. um i can't remember his name albi i think um well, let me double check that uh i, I remember newt's name I'm not very good with names. Yeah, Albie. Okay, I was right. Um, so Albie, the leader, kind of comes up and he's like, hey, um, don't ask any questions. Um, you'll get the tour tomorrow. Well, for now, just relax. But, um, but Thomas has a hard time accepting this. And, you know, other people are talking and, and he's just trying to look around and trying to understand what's going on. And there's this new language and there's these, um, these he understands what everyone's saying, but there's this vocabulary he's not catching. And he's in this weird place where he can kind of smell like a farm and he can see some corn and he can hear some animals and, and he can see some... Um, kind of broken down um homemade structures and and he's just trying to understand it and it's not um it's not coming in very easily and he asks again he says he um oh um they Alby tries to shake his hand but uh for some reason thomas decides not to he turns around goes to a tree and just kind of sits down and just kind of puts his back to a tree and kind of <laughs> falls down. Albie walks over, sits down in front of him, and then he says again, um, where am I? And then Albie starts to talk to him a little bit and trying to tell him to relax. Um, but Thomas keeps interrupting him. So finally, Albie just grabs him and lifts him up. And he's like, no interruptions. And... Um, and he's really, <laughs> Thomas is like, whoa, what's going on? And then Alby starts saying like, look, if I tell you what's going on, you're going to die right now. You're going to die of a heart attack. And then you're not going to be any good to anyone. And uh, then this other character, um, Newt, comes along and says, whoa, whoa, hey. Um, actually, Newt, I think it was introduced before, but he comes up to Alby and he's like, hey, relax. Um you're gonna scare this guy you're not doing any good let's just take a moment and um and then they just kind of explain like look this is the first day we don't have time to tell you more um it's almost time for bed you can ask questions tomorrow and you'll get the tour just relax for now um albie decides to walk away and newt um just kind of starts to coach um to coach Thomas, you know, to say, hey, everyone has been here. Everyone's had a first day. Um, everyone's been in a situation where they don't know what's going on. And and it's okay. Um, we know what you're feeling. Everyone does. Just let it out. Um, and he says, look, let's go get you a bed. And um, we'll talk about this in the morning. As they're going um, to the bed, there's this just scream I, I don't know what it is. Eee! It's a shriek, and everyone's like, <gasps> and they look over at the wood house that I believe Albie went into. 
and um, Newt is like, ah, oh, can't they do anything without me? And he says, look, I'm sorry. Go find Chucky. Um, he'll help you. Do I have that? Yeah, go find Chucky. He'll help you get a bed. Tell him he's in charge of you. I got to go. And so um, Newt goes and Thomas is just by himself. And I believe um, he kind of um, just um, leans against a tree again. And it's just like, what in the world is going on? And that is the end of chapter two. Well, ah! Sorry. The first vocabulary word is staggered. When Thomas gets out of the elevator, he, he staggers. He can't keep his balance. So he's kind of moving side to side, almost like he's drunk. Um, but he's not. He's just kind of disoriented. And there's everyone around. Void, devoid of expression. Um, as he's looking around at the kids, there's one person. Um, oh, no, this, this is um, re regarding to Albie, I believe. Um, he looks at Albie, and Albie it just doesn't have any, any facial expression. Just flat. He's not happy. Hey, man. Not angry. Who are you? He's just, hey, I'm Albie. <laughs> just straight. He is without devoid, without expression. Shrill. Um, this is like a really high-pitched sound. If you imagine a little fairy, okay, and I was talking to this little fairy, what kind of sound would the fairy have? Hi, I'm a fairy. No, it'd be like, hi, what's your name? <laughs> it'd be really high and sharp, that shrill. Slopper, we don't know what that means yet. Um, that was just one of the, the words that they threw out. I could guess maybe doing something with food, caring for animals, I don't know. Um, sometimes we call food slop. Um, especially like in the army or at school, the cafeteria food. Oh, what is this slop? You can say. Dilapidated. Um, this means like uneven or even broken down. Um, some of the houses in the glade, they're not brand new houses. They're not perfectly built houses. Maybe there's some pieces of wood just in the shape of a, of a shack. And it's not even, it's not straight. It's just kind of there dilapidated menacing this is um looks angry or looks like it'll be trouble or looks evil um so like in this picture here okay you look and you can see these walls and you can see this opening and that opening is dark and tall and scary it looks menacing it kind of gives you fear um, when you see it. Struggling to keep it even. <laughs> this is when Thomas is speaking. He So many crazy emotions are going on inside of him. And he's just ready to, <laughs> to start bawling. And so when he's talking to Albie, he's like, he's trying to keep his voice from, where? What? Where am I? Right, kind of shaking or cracking, but where am I? He's trying to keep it even so it doesn't sound scared. Um, whacker, we don't know what that means yet. Um, oh, and then these other three. Um, here we have a hint, clunk. Clunk your pants. Um, we can use this expression in English like poop your pants. Um, you would be so scared that you would poop your pants. Or if I say, ah, and then maybe your friend is like, ah, and you're like, oh my goodness, you were so scared. Did you poop your pants? Something like this. So here, clunk your pants. We can guess that clunk might mean something like poop. I don't know, it could also be something else, but it might have the same kind of meaning or at least feeling. Churned. Um, churned is like mix. Um, 
the in the olden days you would churn butter you would kind of stir it and mix it you wouldn't blend it you would just kind of slowly keep it mixed and folding it onto each other and so thomas's stomach i believe his stomach churned and that's like when you're oh my stomach's kind of moving um the last one we have here is good that and the reason I wrote this one here is because a lot of the dialogue in this book is not normal English, okay? It has a lot of slang inside of it. They're using um, grammar in a strange way, and they're using new vocabulary words. And especially Newt. Newt, the way he talks, is really, really different. And even in the book says he kind of has this accent. Um, I don't know what kind of accent, but um, but we don't say good that. Um, I don't know why they say it in in the story. Maybe we'll learn why, but we say okay, or we can say Roger that. Sometimes in the army, like <laughs> Roger that, Roger that, which means like okay, I got it, understand. And this is kind of what the same thing means, good that, like okay, I understand, I got it or yes, or that's good. It could have many different meanings, but it's not common, it's just in this book. And a lot of different things are like that. So if you read a sentence in the dialogue and you can't quite understand it, don't try to read each word, but you're gonna have to really um, try to guess the meaning in a lot of these conversations. And if there's one that you can't understand, just underline it, highlight it, circle it, whatever. And then when we meet and we have our discussion, just ask me, what does this sentence mean? And then I can help you um, understand it more clearly. But there's way too many in the book to go through each one. All right. Now discussion question. My question to you is, um, Thomas asked four questions. And I guess that is a little bit impressive. I don't know. But, um, but what would your first question be, right? Imagine coming out of this elevator. You don't remember anything. You get out and there's all these boys around. If you're a girl, maybe you can imagine all these girls around. But there's all these people around and you're in this crazy place. And what would you ask? What would be the first question? Or, you know, I have questions because I think I would ask a question, but you say, what would be the first thing you would say? Hi! Mom, what would you say? What would be the first thing out of your mouth? And then, of course, please write your own discussion question. There was a lot to see and a lot to think about in this chapter. And I know you have some kind of question that you thought about and that you're ready to share. All right. Well... That's all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, if you have any questions about the video today, uh, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. If you had any other vocabulary words that you wanted to know what they meant, uh, let me know. And also, if you're interested in maybe joining one of these book clubs, um, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.